I wonder how long I've been live. I wonder if everybody could hear me go. Hey, welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I got a great show lined up for you guys because I did my homework. Um, John is also going to hand me a note here soon, I'm sure, as you guys uh, look things over here. By the way, uh, my assistant today, Kristen, uh, called me down in my office and said, hey, Doug, there's a doctor who's uh, been trying to get you and he didn't leave a message or anything. And I get this quite a bit. It, it's really an honor. Um, and I said, okay, well, I'll give him a buzz before I go on the air here. And uh, his name was Wilcoxon, Dr. Wilcoxon. He's a medical doctor. Uh, and he was in Alabama. Uh, now, uh, this gets so interesting. Uh, you never know, folks. I've had one or two through the years who want to fight, you know, and just say, look, you're crazy. Um, fungus isn't anything but, you know, a yeast that's a commensal that's inside the human body anyway, so don't give it any time. And uh, this guy just lit up. Doug, Co the Doug Kaufman? I said, yes, sir, the Doug Kaufman. Man, I love you. I got your books. I listen to you. Uh, he's now retiring or retired. And he said, I wish I'd have known this, you know, so many years ago. But he said, I need to tell you something. You've hit it right on. And I said, okay, wh which part of my message have I hit right on? Infection. You've hit, we say cancer, we say arthritis, we say diabetes, you say infection. And I got to tell you, I think you're right. You know, my last decade of practice, it was nothing but uh, antifungals and so forth. So I pulled out something, folks, that I thought you would absolutely love. A um, couple of things here today. Chronic conditions. This just came today on Science Daily. It's a website I really like. I get a lot of my information uh, on from this website. This is Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation. Chronic diseases such as stroke, ischemic heart disease, and lung cancer. Chronic diseases, okay, such as stroke, ischemic heart disease, and lung cancer now represent the leading causes of premature death in China, according to a new scientific study. The rises in non-communicable diseases reflects the decline in maternal and child mortality over the last three decades. I thought this was so fascinating, folks, for this reason. Ch chronic conditions, not infectious diseases, are the top five causes of early death in China. Did you get that? Chronic conditions, not infectious diseases, are the top five causes of death in China. And then this Dr. Wilcoxon, Glenn Wilcoxon, calls me and he says, man, I've been reading your books, listening to you, you are dead on, uh, that these aren't chronic health conditions, these are infectious, infectious diseases. And I didn't even get it. I mean, I couldn't even put one in one. I know what I wanted to talk about today. They're calling them chronic. Cancer is just a chronic condition. Diabetes, you see, there's nothing you can do. Mycotic arthritis doesn't exist. It couldn't be mycotoxins. Uh, it has to be a degeneration disease to what we treat with anti-inflammatories and cortisone. You know the, the whole task, folks. You've been at this for a long, long time. Well, here's a doctor on the same day I'm going to announce this. These aren't chronic conditions. In my humble opinion, these are infectious diseases. But I love the headline, chronic conditions, comma, not infectious diseases, are the top five causes of early death in China. They're the top 20 causes of death, early or otherwise, in America, in every nation in the world. Infectious diseases, not chronic conditions. You see, that's where I differ with the medical community. They learn in their medical training, you can do nothing about cancer. You're not smart enough. Uh, diabetes is a, is a genetic type 1 diabetes. You're linked, man. That sperm and egg became Doug Kaufman, and it gave you diabetes, and there's not a thing in the world you can do about that. Shh, don't ask questions. You're a student. I'm the pharmacology. I mean, I'm from the pharmaceutical company to teach you everything you need to know about chronic conditions. It's not right, folks. It's off its axis. You know, the world is off its axis a little bit here when we have pharmaceutical executives and PhDs training our MDs. It's not right uh, because they don't know that these diseases cancer. We know 
that there are certain mycotoxins, my last lecture, I think there were five or six mycotoxins that induced cancer. Aflatoxin. It causes human hepatocellular cancer, liver cancer. And yet, they would call that a chronic condition. No, it isn't. It's an infectious disease. Fungi infect human tissues, off-gas a poisonous product called a mycotoxin, in this case, aspergillus, off-gases, you know, aflatoxin, and it causes hepatocellular cancer. Where's hepatocellular cancer real bad? In Africa, where they eat corn, maize, as a staple in almost every meal. So I'm going to start drinking now the way I started with the opening of the show. Then he goes on to tell me <clears throat> that his church is Church of His Presence in Alabama. Now, I had heard that before, that church, and then I got it. A friend of mine wrote me on Sunday and said, hey, get online. Ward Simpson, who's my friend, who is the CEO of God TV, is lecturing at Church of His Presence in Alabama. So Ward is, you know, from Barbados in Florida, and here he was in Alabama, and he gave a great talk on James uh, 3, 7, and 8, how your mouth can hurt or help others. Uh, and I thought it was just splendid. And here, three days later, two days later, I meet this new doctor, new friend. He goes to that church, and I said, do you know Ward Simpson? He goes, yeah, Ward spoke there last weekend. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Isn't that exciting how the world turns? Uh, so, here's where I differ with the medical community, and that's what this doctor said. He likes what I teach because I'm differing with the medical community. You see, folks, for those of you who are new viewers to this, welcome, number one, this venue. And number two, just know this. Mice don't get diabetes, so we got to give them diabetes. <laughs> who wins? <laughs> oh, can you shoot on this, John? Yeah, they're very polite. Okay, good. Um, uh, here, I, John's going to show you something here. What's that on your face? Okay, we thought we'd come in and make a big deal of it. Did you guys notice I had a little cyst right here on my face? So, Aileen, I'm sending you a signed copy of this book. You were the first one to take note. What is that on your face? And John said, everybody was very kind. Uh, I wanted to say I was in a bar fight. A guy was trying to light my cigarette the other night, and I dropped it into my beer. I was going to give you some story like that, uh, but that just isn't accurate. What's that on your face? So yesterday, I went to this clinic after hours. You know, 4 o'clock, she set it up a really cool uh, surgeon, she and I just ended up laughing the whole time. It only took 20 minutes, but I had a little cyst. It was an ingrown hair that through the past couple of years, it had just gotten a little bigger and a little bigger. And, uh, and as she was cutting it, she had to go pretty deep. Um, and as she was cutting it, uh, we got to talking about it. You know, is it a boy? Is it alive? And we were just absolutely rolling. Um, she took it out and I saved it because I'm going to send it over to my friends and see if it happens to be an ascomycete. What is an ingrown hair? So I know what starts it. A hair gets ingrown, gets a little pus pocket under it, gets infected. Well, this thing was just bugging me because I thought it was going to sprout a head and legs and arms and D2, Doug 2, was going to develop out of my own cheek. So Aileen, you win. I'm going to sign a copy of the book and get it off to you, and thank you guys for being nice. That's what that is on my face. Um, and, it, you know, when the... When the uh, numbing agent wore off uh, last night, it was a little sore. You guys have to understand, um, I was in Vietnam. I saw guys lose arms. Uh, I saw guys shot through the stomach. Um, I saw pain, and I'll never forget some of those guys' faces. It was horrible. It was just horrible. And when I when I was a, you know, I'm still a dad, but when I was a young dad and the boys would fall, you know, skin their knees, I'd say, oh, you're going to be okay. Oh, dad, it's horrible. It's... I kept flashing back at these 18-year-old kid, 19-year-old kid's faces. And so I don't uh, feel pain maybe the way other people do. You know, they want to know if you want to uh, take Tylenol or aspirin or you're going to need something tonight as that wears off. Um, 
I'm not taking anything, man. I don't want more stomach bleeding or any stomach bleeding from aspirin. I'm not a Tylenol guy. And so I roughed it, as they say. Uh, thank you, Aileen. That was really cool. I'll sign that book and get it off to you tomorrow. Um, so I was talking chronic conditions, not infectious diseases, are the top five causes of early death in China. And they go on to say, you know, that, that cancer. What I was going to tell you about diabetes, since mice and bunnies, you know, don't get diabetes, how do we study diabetes drugs? Oh, keep that thought. Guess what I did last night? Two of these, after I got home, this is silver. Um, two of these, a shot or two of this, and uh, then some topical uh, antibacterial cream on here. There's underneath stitches that were deep and then superficial stitches. Looks like six, uh, six little stitches. And I go back in a week and I get those taken out. But that's, I mean, I, I was amazed uh, at how cool it was. Just boom, it was gone. Um, I'm very bullish on this company, folks. You know that. Optivita Silver. When we have pimples that go bad or ingrown hairs or boom booms, uh, stuff like this for your grandkids, your kids, yourself, in your medicine cabinet. But they also have the curcumin, you know, the liposomal, fat-based curcumin, it's so good. And hemp, they have a hemp that's so good and a topical hemp. I mean, look them up, optivitahealth.com. Love them. And I just, look, look, ah, such good stuff. Since bunnies and mice don't get diabetes, how do we study the glitazone? The, the drugs, that, the newer drugs that help people with diabetes. Uh, Actos and Avandia are the glitazones, right? How do we study those? <clears throat> You've got to study them on laboratory animals. So you have to do what we call induce diabetes. You've got to wreck the beta cells in the pancreas, right? You've got to, you've got to blow them out. Well, how do you do that? The only way I can think is with poison. And that's the same way the scientific community thinks. What poison do we use? Uh, let's use uh, two current antibiotics, baflomycin and streptozotocin. Uh, these are potent antibiotics. I don't even know if they're used anymore because they will cause sugar problems. They will induce sugar problems. So in a year, we inoculate bunnies, mice, rats, etc. And now they all have diabetes. And not one scientist crawls in bed at night, puts his arm around his wife as they're watching TV and says, hey, at the next ad, can we pause? Sure, honey, why? I just want to talk to you. Click pause. I was driving home from work today, and I just need to tell you something. You know, I'm earning 130000 a year working at the medical school. Yeah, I mean, we're blessed to have that job. We sure are. But I got to tell you, I discovered what I've been injecting in these little mice or these bunnies for the past two years. It's something called streptozotocin. So I got online, typed it in, or baflomycin. These are antibiotics. They're mycotoxins, fungal metabolites, poison. And it ruins the beta cells of these little animals, and they end up with a disease called diabetes. Okay, honey, can we put it back on now? No, 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 no. Root vegetables, potatoes, carrots, you know, things that grow way down deep and have big roots on them. That's where these antibiotics, baflomycin and streptozotocin, come from. I ju you know the little black eyes on potatoes that you gouge in, right? Um, probably loaded with baflomycin. Honey, what's your point? You know, Superman is back on. I want to watch it now. My point is this. I think diabetes might be a lifestyle driven. I think when we started eating potato skins, remember we used to peel them out when we were kids? Never ate the skin. You threw it away. Then we started to call them healthy, and we'd load potatoes and cheese and, you know, chives and everything. We'd eat the whole potato skin. Didn't diabetes just take off like that? Hmm, that has merit. Why is it? If it's so true, honey, who are you? You got a Ph.D. degree from Harvard. You know, who are you to know what those real important scientists who taught you didn't know? Folks, it takes one person to step out and say, I think we're on to something here. Diabetes, thank you, John. Diabetes is not, hey, John, would you hang on to this? Make sure I get Aileen. Yeah, I already wrote it. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? What's that thing growing on Doug's face? Um, good, Tommy's on. 
Um, I just need to tell you that a headline like this, chronic conditions, not infectious diseases, are killing people. What if chronic conditions are infectious diseases? Doug Kaufman thinks so. And I don't think it's ironic or coinkadinky that I had a doctor, a physician, just call me and say, you know what, I think you're dead on. Out of the clear, I've never known this man. He just called to say thank you. I'm reading your uh, fungus link number two right now. Had a couple of questions. And then he said something. He said, you know how you always say, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. Here's what I always say. Don't neglect the obvious. I always used to tell my patients, don't neglect the obvious. Pretty obvious to that guy with his arm around his wife when he gives 30 inoculations to a bunny rabbit and the bunny rabbit gets diabetes, that that bunny wasn't born with diabetes. I don't... Uh, I wonder how much diabetes, <laughs> they say there's 60 million cases of diabetes in America alone and 20, 000, 20 million of them don't even know. Boy, we better drink a big soda, get to the doctor, let him draw our blood. <gasps> you have diabetes, I want you on these medications. Hush, slow down, put the brakes on, doc. Talk to us about the infectious nature, potentially, of our illness. I mean, they all go through microbiology. Microbiology in medical school is a couple of years of germ, germology. But there's bacteriology, there's virology, there's uh, mycology, the study of fungus. Shh. Put that one over. A uh, little vaginal yeast, little ringworm. But put that one over. Bacteriology. How many antibiotics are in a pharmacy? Uh, 1,500. How many antifungals? Uh, four. So what do we need to sell? Well, antibiotics. So let's teach all our students everything's bacteria. But what if that hurts them? What if antibiotics, God forbid, cause cancer? You see where I'm going, okay? Thank you. Now, one more thing before I get to Tommy and Martine. I signed two books yesterday to Martine. I thought they lived here in the US. They are in Great Britain. Uh, I, I don't know this couple, but I really like them. And I, I wish such good things for them. They're both the sweetest people that I communicate with. One more thing before I get to that. And there was another headline. Oh, that's a headline. Here's another one. Are you sitting down? You know, I love doing this. Uh, even with my patch, uh, I love doing this. Because it gives me this venue to vent. On TV, I normally get five minutes, six minutes, so I have to hit on, you know, popular issues. Here's something that just came out today. These commonly prescribed medications may increase your risk for dementia. <gasps> Doug, we're seeing an explosion of Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and autism and dementia, senile dementia. What's happening? In Gee, we don't know. We don't. A study at the University of Nottingham in the UK, hello there Martine and Tommy, uh, found that there's a link between dementia and a certain class of drugs, uh, anticholinergic -chol drugs. Okay, the drugs particularly antidepressants, bladder, antipsychotics, antiepileptic drugs result in nearly 50 percent increased increasing of the odds of dementia. And the longer you take them, like anything, antibiotics don't cause any problems when you first, yes they do. They make your gut nude. You need to put the bacteria back no matter how many rounds you've been on. Uh, an alcoholic drink, eh, we've all had one. Um, it's not, look, they're neurotoxic. You can have a glass of wine and be normal. You can't have 15 glasses of wine or 15 rounds of antibiotics. These are both mycotoxins. You can't eat that much fungus and be okay. Okay, so I thought this was just fascinating. Doctors prescribe these drugs to treat a variety of, of course they prescribe their doctors, including chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, fungus, bladder conditions, my opinion, fungus, allergies, fungus, gastrointestinal disorders, antibiotics, so fungus, and Parkinson's disease. 
The risk is only associated with 1,095 daily doses for a 10-year period, which is equivalent to an older adult taking strong medication daily for at least three years. Anybody out there take strong medication for three years? Here's the good news. We are big enough, we are small enough to have kept this hidden very well for decades. We are big enough, somebody blew a whistle, we are big enough to acknowledge, uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. We are causing the dementia we're seeing today. And yet we are taught to this day there's nothing bad to say about drugs. True, drugs, two years ago I told you I took that antibiotic, I went in and demanded the antibiotic I wanted. I knew I had pneumonia. Um, and thank God I got it. Saved my life, probably. Um, at least they're admitting it. Here's the only sunshine out of all this. At least they're admitting it. One day, papers like these, chronic conditions, not infectious diseases, are killing the Chinese. One day that will say, whoops, chronic conditions are infectious diseases. They don't. They don't know that, folks. When you don't know fungus, uh, pharmacies are jammed, hospitals are jammed. If you don't know fungus, everything's good in medicine. It's a $4 trillion business. Stay in it. Once you know fungus and you change, you stop feeding it, you start treating it with harmless supplements, and you feel much better, you're not much value to those institutions anymore, okay? So I had a whole lot of things I was going to do, but you guys want to talk, and that's much more important to me. I always have a backup plan in case nobody's watching. Oh. Tommy, one of my favorite days of the week. Bless your heart, Tommy. Have you been shopping uh, for the old man this week? I've been, uh, he, I just talked to him. I've been rotating my antifungals each week. How many do you recommend daily alongside probiotics? Just one. Doesn't take much. Um, Tommy, I to this day, uh, I just took oregano oil. I still rotate. I starve as much as I can, Tommy, and then there's little Berkeley and Rex, my little grand boys. And uh, I, I don't know what happened. I fall apart. Berkeley wants a bowl of ice cream. Hey, Coco, have you ever had a cheeseburger? Uh, I'll eat a cheeseburger. Anything to be with that little boy. You know what he did? John, I didn't tell you. But he FaceTimed me today. His mom gave him her phone. And he FaceTimed me. I was over in my office doing this. And he sets the phone down. And I'm looking at a chandelier in their bedroom uh, for 15 minutes while he's talking to me. <laughs> he says, hey, Coco, look at this. OK, Berkeley, you got to pick up the phone. And there you are. What did you want me to look at? Oh. <laughs> you know this. So he said, I'm going to see you in four sleeps. That means four nights. He's got to go to bed four nights, and, and I get to see him this weekend. So I'm just thrilled. Tommy, uh, if, you, if your doctor, you've been to the doctor, and the doctor says, man, you've got an acute flare-up, or you've got a chronic condition. I don't think it's fungus. And, and you say to him, is it OK if I begin taking antifungal drugs? No, I'm not going to give you antifungal drugs. I don't believe in that. Would you mind if I took aloe vera? Would you mind if I took vitamin C? And you begin rotating uh, these uh, dozens of antifungals. No, I don't care if you take supplements or change your diet. That's no big deal. If you've got a condition that's really, I mean, ringworm, you know, really growing on your body, um, that's the time to really increase. You can do three a week, one every other day, rotate these things. Probiotics, just a good idea to stay on when you suspect that the gut may be involved. I said this 40 years ago, it, it bears repeating now, the gut is really the organ that's out of sync in all conditions. I'm talking depression, I'm talking hair loss, I'm talking arthritis. I really believe that's the case. Fix this and watch how the rest of it works. Coincidentally, following Tommy, listening on YouTube, is a wonderful young woman named Martine. Uh, hey Doug, I've been doing the diet for a week and two days. <laughs> I'm so excited for her. My question is, my energy levels are going up and down. OK, I used sugar for energy before. Now I'm looking for something to help me. Um, OK, so I've got to just tell you guys, because I just told this doctor on, on the phone about this. 
He said as he got started on the program, he said, I kind of feel punk for a couple days. I really don't feel good. Normally, I'm, I really feel good. So I explained Herxheimer's, right? Um, and I explained how you might feel absolutely horrible and itch more and more, you know, mucus in your nose and so forth for the first few days. That is generally followed, Martine, by what I used to call the yo-yo effect. And all doctors' patients who worked with me said, Doug, I'm yo-yoing. And we both knew exactly what that was. I'm going five days, Martine says, and I feel on top of the world. My energy levels, I want to go out and walk, and I want to jog, and I feel really good. And man, I didn't cheat, Doug. And the next day, I'm just like this. Folks, the, the yeast don't die off totally, nor are there 17 fungi or yeast. There's likely millions of them. And, you know, I've taught you that green apples are okay. Well, the argument is still some carbs, right? Uh, and so it depends, Martine, everybody represented to me, every patient of the thousands I saw of these doctor's patients, everyone represented a thumbprint. And as we began to carefully analyze with some of these people, um, they couldn't do green apples. They couldn't do berries. If I took them off all fruits, grapefruit and everything, they really had weeks and weeks and weeks of feeling great. So theirs was probably what we call a deeper mycosis than other people. Your husband can go off beer and feel like a million bucks. You've got to go off fruit and bread and pasta and sugar and everything to feel like a million bucks. We're all on this road at a different time and in a different stage. Uh, so Martine, that's a signal, if you get that down day, to think, hmm, I'm glad Doug said that, because I made a carrot juice the other day. Carrots on the glycemic index. You know, carrots got sugar in it. And by the by, when I used to eat a bunch of carrots every day, I used to eat around that central core that's so sugary, and then I'd eat the sugary. There's no way to juice a carrot without eating the middle core, that sugary part, right? Um, but think back, every day, Doug, when I wake up and feel kind of punk, the night before, the day before, breakfast, lunch, or dinner I've had, fill in the blank, and you'll be able to find how to go two weeks. But generally speaking, Martine, people felt horrible for two or three days, then they'd pop out of it. Then they'd really start feeling good, and then for reasons we don't know, recirculation of mycotoxins, they have a down day followed by four good days. I beat it, followed by the fifth day I didn't cheat, ate boring food, and I feel horrible. Likely you did cheat or challenge just according to Doug's rules, not your thumbprint. You probably ate something the day before, usually dinner that night, that may have caused you to nosedive a little bit. And you'll find that out. Um, I'm so glad you have Tommy to work with because he really understands this. Uh, just know that two months from now, Christmas time, you'll probably feel like a million bucks every day. This Martine is the volume switch that I try and teach people. Turn it. Uh, I know this sounds hard to believe, but 60 days from today, you'll probably be able to. <laughs> the one thing people tell me that they sin with, I often laugh at this because I I met and spent a little time with Linus Pauling uh, in California is an orange. You know, Doug, it's such a good fruit. I love an orange. And when I eat an orange, though, you know, we, diabetics used to carry an orange. Now it's candy bar. My grandma used to carry an orange. And the doctor said if she went into diabetic coma, cut that orange and eat it quickly. Boy, that's a medication. Get your blood sugar right back up, which is why it isn't on the Kaufman diets. But sometimes people eat watermelon or some kind of a melon or an orange and they'll take a nosedive. Well, there's a cause and effect relationship with that. Two months from now, you're going you're gonna to be on top of this, Martine. You're going to know how to turn it up and turn it down. Okay? Good. I'm so glad you're with me. Uh, <laughs> here comes Tommy. Uh, Tommy, they're going back and forth, Tommy and Martine. Tommy just ate a lovely piece of pound cake with some goat yogurt. Mm, I love that stuff. Now for a grapefruit and then my bedtime psyllium. I don't stop eating, Doug. I love this food. How's little Berkeley? I'm glad you're doing this, and I'm so glad Martine has you. I wish everybody had a Tommy, or many of you guys, Aileen, to help you better understand this. Uh, uh, you'll get it. Give it a little time. 
Um, I have a friend <clears throat> who is an aeronautic engineer who helps me with my old motorcycles. I have a great collection of old vintage motorcycles. And uh, he, he challenges his brain with every one of these motorcycles that many people will never see one like some of the ones I have over here. And he said, I love the education. I'm hungry for education. Um, it, that's when we start a phase one antifungal program, folks, we're venturing into a brand new area for many of us. You mean my symptoms are due to what I've been fueling my body with? Mm -hmm. And it starts even before that. You mean my symptoms then directly or indirectly, Doug, are from the antibiotics mom gave me when I was a little, yeah, yeah. The good bacteria, poof. And that good bacteria makes some of the B vitamins, including the energy vitamin B12. So when Martine says, oh, likely more probiotics, the bacteria in there will have these little pumps, will start making more B12 and all the other Bs, and she'll start feeling better and better and better. The journey of a thousand miles, Martine, begins with step number one. I am thrilled you're on day 14. Congratulations, that's really cool. When you get the books I sent you, you'll better understand all of this. By the by, I autographed them for you. Uh, Tommy, good for you. How's little Berkeley? Thank you for asking. He's amazing. Uh, June, uh, and know the cause. I was wondering what probiotic you would recommend. So, June, I made a pact with myself so many years ago. There are good probiotics on the market today. You guys got them in England. You got, and, and I know we have people watching this right now from Brazil and Africa and so forth. Thank you all for joining me. Um, in America, we probably have 30 to 50, what I would consider very, very good probiotic makers. No more? <laughs> you look like you're down, John. Yeah, Apollo, good question. Could molds and fungus within foods be killed off during cooking, roasting, etc.? You've heard that a thousand times. Yeah, I have. Good question. Aren't they great? Yeah. This audience just rocks my world. Oh my goodness, I'm so thankful for the book. I gave your cookbook to a family that had cancer. Oh, Aileen, isn't this a God thing? I'm so happy. Thank you guys for being the sharpest audience in the world. Um, so I'm biased, and I'm the guy who wants to maintain transparency. I've done it for 30 years on radio and television. I don't want you, um, I want you to trust me and not think I'm saying this because somebody's paying me to. Uh, uh, 15, 14 years ago, I found a probiotic, and I'm a nut this way. You know me, Junae. I take things myself to see how. I would never take estrogen. I've taken about everything else to sample it on myself to see how I do. Uh, Dr. O'Hara's probiotics, Dr. O-H-H-I-R-A. Dr. O'Hara's probiotics are living bacteria, and they eat food inside a little eco chamber, right? A little black encapsulated chamber that has food in it for them. And for years, and remember they're bacteria, they're tiny, they don't sit down with a steak knife and you know, they eat micro quantities of food to thrive and grow. And man, I had questions about this company 15 years ago. And they're still advertisers on my show. They don't pay me to talk about them on this venue. I love them, so I talk about them. They're always my go-to probiotics, but there are many, many good probiotics out there. Generally, probiotics are reconstituted. Acids, water in the body, reconstitute them. And uh, they're multi-strained, lactobacillus, acidophilus, you've heard of that, but there are many, many good strains. Um, and, and probiotics is a general statement. If you take, remember in 2017, I took uh, three days of, of an antibiotic and wrestled with it. Uh, but it got me better. I then took, I think it was two months of probiotics every day, morning and evening, probiotic. Uh, we really need to make up that good bacteria in the gut. Good questions. Love what you are doing, says Julie. Thank you so much. Have you had any opinion on real-time labs, mycotoxin testing? Um, so I have worked with them in the past. 
look, you guys, um, the owner of that business is a pathologist. He was in the Navy like me. Um, he's intense. His employees are PhD mycologists. One of the reasons I used to love, I had a lab in California many years ago, and one of the reasons I loved it was I enjoy intellectual conversation. <laughs> and sitting with these PhDs at lunch, I remember I took, I had, uh, I had uh, two PhD biochemists and three immunologists working uh, for me in Los Angeles. And we had babies. And the first question that comes to mind is, should we, you know, give these kids their vaccinations? I took the immunologists, three of them, three separate days to lunch. And I talked about what I knew about immunomodulation, immunomemory, immunorecognition. Uh, and then I asked them, these are smart, smart people. Then I asked them their opinions of, you know, vaccinations. At that time when I had kids, there were probably 10 of them. Today there's something like 50 or 60. It's, in my opinion, gotten a little bit out of control, but everybody's got to make that decision. Every parent has to make that decision for themselves. My point is real-time labs. Probably uh, some of the smartest, most enjoyable people to get together with. Um, and uh, their sales department is quite helpful. They can answer your questions, laugh with you, and so forth. These are deep intellectual people. And so people misconstrue that, that they're not interested in answering your questions or so forth. Um, they're in a gray area. They're doing DNA mycotoxin testing. Uh, and it's really involved, it's really exciting, it's ELISA, if you know that, enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay testing for not only mycotoxin, or for not only fungi, but the mycotoxins they make, it's expensive, um, but I really like them. I've met with three fungal testing laboratories, uh, one on the West Coast, one in Atlanta, and these people here in Texas, uh, real-time labs, and once you get to know them, they're tremendous people. And what they can do is awesome. What they're able to test from that sample, that you know, 25-year-old lump that's been in paraffin wax in a hospital for 25 years, and can you find mycotoxins in there? They're that good. They are that good. So uh, have you any opinion on real-time labs? I really like them. And they offer a service, guys, that very few, I mean, a laboratory you have to remember all your clients are medical doctors who don't think fungus causes any problem. And they keep your laboratory going financially by sending their patients blood, stool, urine, sputum, you know, off to your laboratory. Um, and so I like real-time labs because they've stepped outside of the box and they've gone where I think 50 years from now all laboratories will have to go. Good. Diane, uh, Doug can uh, try trichotillomania, 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 be fungus in the brain. Uh, so pulling hair out, right? Um, Diane, this is such a good question. Can irregular heartbeat? Can blepharospasms, where your eye twitches? Here's the coolest thing, you guys. You need to know a little bit more about me. I was convinced when Dr. Weekly, David Weekly, from Johns Hopkins, he was a dermatologist, flew to California to see me. He was upset with me because I wrote a book, and in, I just wanted to give you guys a good look at this. Uh, in that book, I contended that skin problems were underneath problems coming out on the skin. He didn't agree with that. Uh, so we had several meetings. And he flew to LA where I was, met with my family, uh, and then within three months made me an offer, a nice offer to come to Dallas for five years. He had several doctors on staff. He was at Medical City, Dallas out here. And to help them with uh, people's diets and with fungus, gut permeability, food hypersensitivity, that kind of stuff that I was really into. 
And so we, find a, we signed a five-year contract. Within um, 90 days, four months, uh, he pulled me into his office one night before I went home. I always liked to get home because I'd go upstairs and bathe the kids while Ruth was downstairs cooking. And she loved that free time, just to be alone, and I loved the time. So he kept me after uh, for half an hour or so. And at first I thought he was angry. He had three charts, and he throws them on my lap and says, what do you think about these? Oh, Carolyn. Yeah, Carolyn had lymphoma. She doesn't have it now, Doug. I don't know if he's ticked or if he's happy. And I said, yeah, I know. She, uh, she called me. What the heck are you doing? What are you doing? And I said, Dave, I mean, you raise your right hand. <laughs> Do what's right, right? And he said, no, don't get me wrong. I'm thrilled. He, he wasn't, um, uh, he had a different kind of personality. Another very intellectual guy who I loved going out with. Um, and David said, we have a couple of people who are friends of ours, my wife and I, who have AIDS. What would you do in those cases? Okay, Dave, these people need the Myers cocktail. They need the 25 milligrams of zinc. They need at least 10 grams, maybe 20 of vitamin C. So I started, and you know what he said to me? Can you order it tomorrow? Yeah, you want to start doing IVs here? I want to do what you're telling me. And I said, okay. And he said, would you use Diflucan? I said, absolutely. Um, did you guys know fluconazole or Diflucan was invented for AIDS patients? Carposi sarcoma, Carposi sarcoma, and other diseases that these poor people were dying of are fungal diseases. Diflucan was invented as an AIDS drug. Oh, by the by, it's crossed that river, hasn't it? It's now the one pill vaginal yeast cure, and it's so many other things. But I said, would you mind, Dave, it's off record, but would you mind if we gave AIDS patients Diflucan? How much? I do 150 milligrams a day, 200 milligrams a day. Okay, look, I'm going to start listening to you. <laughs> well, okay, I've been there four or five months. He said, you know, and I open up the two other charts, he said, this is unbelievable. This is a person who had psoriasis. He had before and after pictures of her arm and her back, her psoriasis. Uh, yeah, I remember, you know, it was pretty bad. And he said, look at it now. And he had his pictures like Polaroids. He puts them out. I said, yeah, that's pretty cool. And he said, Doug, this is beyond cool. We didn't learn this at medical training. I said, okay, I changed her diet. I put her on antifungals. The point I want to make, Diane, is this. Could people who have a compulsion to pull their hair, and it isn't just their head, they pull it out, you know, if I had hair on my chest, uh, you'd pull it out there. Um, there is something wrong, there's a disconnect, a synaptic disconnect that would have someone do that. What's wrong? Neurologically speaking, what the heck is going on? My attitude has become the, the Center for Disease Control's attitude in America. They're finally, people are listening, and that is think fungus. When you saw David Weekly finally, you know, said to me, Doug, I'm going to do whatever you say, and I would bring people in with atlas ulcers, I would bring people in with lower back pain, I remember, um, I would bring people in with horrible migraines, one person, had an airport vomit bag with them, coming from the airport to see us in Dallas, throwing up from migraine headaches. I worked with diet. I was really big. I had taken two uh, courses in Fort Worth on herbology. I was learning that maybe we don't need these medications. The darn side effect of these, aren't there herbs? Don't drug companies buy a lot of herbs to put in their products? Yeah. Um, and so I was really hungry. Um, my point in all of this is what I learned. It isn't what I gave to people that got them better all the time. 50% of the time, it's what you take from them. Can you hear that? It's what you take from them. You can't erase a migraine headache like that, but you can sure give them a better tomorrow than he had today. It's so exciting, this work, I've decided, so yes, Diane, what have we to lose? 
was someone who was seeking, I'm sure, psychiatric and dermatologic, uh, you know, office visits. What do we got to lose? You would see this go away in a month on the Kaufman diet. And if I had a condition like this, um, could this be fungus in the brain, she is asking? You bet it could. Fungus breached the blood-brain barrier. I mean, of course it could. They deposit poisons. These poisons are known to disrupt the synaptic transmission. The gate is off. The thoughts are wrong. You can't express yourself anymore. You can't talk. I mean, it's so exciting, my line of work. Uh, why, why, wouldn't we, why wouldn't we honor that person and try it? Eat the right foods to gain great health. Yeah, so this is really a good question Janet has. And my book is over there. The, uh, Janet, uh, Doug, what are your thoughts on root canals? I had one done 27 years ago, and there was an abscess underneath the same tooth that I had the root canal in. They put me on antibiotics and want to retreat the root canal by taking out the old filling material and refilling it with uh, another filling. I've heard root canals are dangerous. What are the risks for root canals? Um, also, what are your thoughts on ozone treatment? I'm very big on ozone treatment. What would you do in my situation? Look, you're in pain. The way they, uh, so Burton Goldberg wrote that great big book over there, and in it he has a whole section, alternative medicine the book was called. You can get it on Amazon now cheap. I think I probably paid, no, I paid $39.95 for that big book. It's probably $9 now. It's a seven, 800 page. But in it he goes into dentistry. He goes into mammograms. Why would anyone compress a breast hard and shoot radiation through it? I mean, he asked questions that I thought were very, very relevant back then. Um, and one of them was on this type of dentistry, root canals. There's a guy named Simon Yu. Uh, he's a medical doctor, uh, Simon Yu, Y-U. He's an MD in uh, St. Louis. And I just, he sent me, he's got a new book coming out he's all excited about. And I've spoken before at his symposiums on mycotoxins. And, he was so excited, he called me after my last lecture and said, you're not going to believe this. I got you into some academy in Baden-Baden, big microbiological academy, all these scientists. And he said, uh, I want you to go with me in January and speak to all these scientists on mycotoxins. Zip interest in traveling internationally. Zip, nada. In my early days, I did a lot of traveling. I have zero interest in traveling across the oceans today, none. And so I, I said, Dr. Yu, I, I'm honored that you would ask me, of all the people you know, why don't we talk to Dr. Trowbridge, John Trowbridge down in Houston. I think John uh, did the gig. I think he took the gig. Um, what I need you to know, uh, Janet, is sometimes an antibiotic can be life-saving. That root canal needs to be fixed. Look up Simon Yu, Y-U. He has on his website um, communication or contact. Uh, tell him, he really likes me, tell him Doug Kaufman asked me to contact you. What would you do if you had an old root canal, 27 years old, that's gone bad on you? This man's a genius. Um, I think he's a dentist also. He's a doctor and a dentist, but he has all these doctors, dentists fly in from all over the world and attend his conferences. So I was honored that he asked me to go to Baden-Baden. I just don't want to do that. Um, so at any rate, Simon Yu will have your answers. What's the great book he wrote? Darn, I have it on my shelf over there. It's got a lion on the cover. I can't remember the name of it. Uh, ozone treatments, maybe in lieu of antibiotics. Find a good ozone treatment center, uh, maybe in lieu of antibiotics, you can do that. Remember. With antibiotics, chase with probiotics. Okay, so Mary Lane, Marilyn, I like that, Mary Lane. Hello, Doug. I had a chest x-ray recently. I was surprised to see the fact that I had atherosclerotic aorta. Okay, is this caused by fungus? If so, does the same regimen apply? You see me, I'm just giving you guys a lot of views of this. Um, bum, bum. So, John, I had a book. Would you get me atherosclerosis? 
Dr. Uh, Costantini's. Walk in front of the camera. John's been doing this for 40 years, television and film production. Hmm. Yeah, that tan one. That's it. Oh, that's breast cancer. Um, it's, it looks just like that one. At any rate, um, there's a whole book written by, there it is. Thank you, John. There's a whole book written by a guy who died a couple years ago, Dr. Costantini. It's called Atherosclerosis, Hope at Last. In this book, I just did a couple of shows on TV. Um, gosh. Tobacco, antibiotics are a risk. Uh, gout is a risk for... Uh, uh, he was one of my mentors. And uh, he signed all of these books. He wrote this... Thank you, Doug Kaufman, for buying this book. Doug, I know that you are dedicated to helping mankind through new nutritional medical knowledge, such as the fact that I present in this book. I present it to you with, with but one wish. Have fun reading it the first time. Reread it from time to time. The scientific facts will make you a food genius. <laughs> Your friend. Antonio V. Costantini, MD, December 1st, 1998. Man, I rub shoulders with the greats. This book says that atherosclerosis, now you're talking about your aorta, one of the leading, you know, right here. Um, so the question is, what makes plaque? Trust me when I tell you, Marilyn, we used to think fat. So all of a sudden, beef became the villain. Um, you know, fat on beef. I remember these days. Then it was avocado. You know, just don't eat avocado. You're going to die of atherosclerosis. Today we know that fungi can, and the wrong oils, rancid fats, um, can contribute to atherosclerosis, but fungi cause atherosclerotic plaque, no matter where, the arteries, you know, capillaries, veins, etc. Um, so yes, it would be, here's what I'd do if I were you, I'd ask the doctor for nystatin and diflucan, I'd stay on it. It's on my printout. You guys can just go to my website. It's free. Just two pages. Copy it off. Uh, just pull down, getting started. At the bottom, you see doctor's fungal protocol. Print it off. Take it to the doc. Ask him for diflucan and nystatin. Then religiously follow my Kaufman One Diet for 60 days. Then go back and get another x-ray or scan. And I think you'll see major improvement in that short period of time. Okay? Isn't this fun to know? Uh, are teeth infections caused by fungus? Trish, I think uh, any doctor would say no, it's caused by bacteria. I'm not a doctor. I think fungus. I think it's fungus. Um, and so you have to be very careful when you get your teeth cleaned. You've seen you can have a heart attack. You know, people get this plaque scraped off, gets down into their body, and this they end up on antibiotics and many of them don't make it many of them have horrible problems with it I think it's because of the drugs of choice antibiotics was that bacteria or was that fungus an antifungal might be extremely therapeutic to these people whereas an antibiotic could feed yeast okay um, if I, I got it and again I, I need to hold this up man before you go to a dentist Suck on one of those in the car before you go in. And uh, then if you're scraping off something and it drops down into the blood vessels and you end up in trouble. This doesn't say bacteria. doesn't say virus. doesn't say fungus. Okay? Antimicrobial. Uh, Kentucky. Hey, Ann. Can fungus cause one to lose weight as well as gain it? Yes. Man, that's such a good question. Obviously, what makes bread rise? Yeast. Yeast makes us rise, too. Uh, but these fungi compete for a food supply with bacteria. And with bacteria gone, because you've been on lots of antibiotics, now yeast begins to eat the foods that we eat. And we begin craving carbohydrates. But instead of gaining weight, our cells aren't getting any of the food, any of the benefits, nutritional benefits, because the yeast cells are. 
So people will lose a lot of weight. I'll never forget a young woman who had, oh, Amy, Amy, Amy. Um, what's that disease where you don't thrive? Anorexia nervosa. Um, and I'm telling you, there is some information in the scientific literature to talk about fungi exhibiting anorexic type behavior in, in a host, us. Um, and so we put her on, and man, were we scared. This is, I'll never forget. This one, David Weekly said, are you sure, are you sure, are you sure? Because she had lost so much weight. She was all of 89 pounds or something, 29, 30 years old. Uh, what else do we have? So we put her on Diflucan and uh, put her on the diet, and sure enough, 93 pounds, 97 pounds, and it went the right way. And that's a dangerous one. Thank you. Uh, this is so good, your, your questions. Thanks so much for answering my question about real-time labs. Just so you know, Medicare, Medicare does cover their initial mycotoxin testing. I got it and confirmed that I had aflatoxin and gliotoxin. Wow. Uh, that's pretty cool. I didn't know that. Medicare, they're a good lab. I really like real-time lab. Um, they're out here in a little town called Richardson. It's near Dallas. Richardson, Texas. I've been over there several times. And I was actually shocked when the pathologist, I probably shouldn't go into this, but the pathologist called me a couple years ago and said, would you be our keynote speaker? I think you know a lot about fungus. And John, you were there. And man, I got up as a chandelier and all these doctors and these wives, and I got up and... Uh, and you, you kind of break the ice. First, I'm not a doctor. I'm there as the guest, a keynote speaker. And uh, one of the doctor's wives, as I began my talk, headed over to the dessert plate. And man, I scolded her. Ah, 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 wait till you hear my talk. Please go back, you know. And we got off on the right foot, and it was a great talk. Um, he is, the guy who puts that on every couple of years, is the boss over there. He's a brilliant, brilliant guy. So thank you. That's good information. Uh, okay, I have a question about insulin-dependent diabetes. Is the insulin necessary if we can maintain, if we can maintain my 91-year-old mum sugar levels? She's been brittle for 40 years. I understand the fungus link, and I think she needs more protein, less grains. I agree. She's got a fungal problem, not a sugar problem. Mary, you know I wrote a book that still sells like it's flying off the shelf, The Fungus Link to Diabetes. Um, there's a reason that book sells and sells and sells for the past 20 years, because the doctors haven't addressed this yet, and it's helping many, many people get better. Uh, uh, Rosalinda, my, uh, uh, okay, so, Paulo, uh, could molds and fungus within foods be killed off during cooking. Okay, uh, yeast and fungi are not heat stable. Uh, you heat up rice and the fungus on the rice or the pasta will die. Here's the negative though. If the, right, if the, uh, myco if the fungus has already off-gassed mycotoxins, they're heat stable. I've read you cannot autoclave. Think about that with an endotracheal tube or a colonoscopy tube. Think about that. You can't autoclave off mycotoxins. How oh, I wish hospitals knew that. Uh, my sister has diabetes and her feet are really swollen and painful. Can she soak her feet in Epsom salts? Thank you. Of course she can. Epsom salts uh, uh, is uh, magnesium sulfate and uh, I, I think that could be extremely therapeutic. That and the Kaufman diet and watch what happens. Uh, help with awakening between one and three nightly. Sometimes that's a liver, the liver's involved in that. But Sandra, if I were you, before you go to bed at night, uh, valerian root tea, at the hour of sleep. A little, one cup valerian, V-A-L-E-R-I-A-N, -E valerian root tea. You won't believe it. God bless you guys. I didn't get them all done, but I'll try and do them later on. Um, Okay, good. Uh, see, okay, uh, Ben. Hmm. I bet you Ben's still watching. Um, okay, Ben, I'm going to go in and answer you tonight. After I get home, everybody here has to get out of here. So, 
Uh, I will answer you. He's asking about a type of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma that ironically is called mycosis fungoides. Mycosis fungus, fungoides. Uh, and they don't say it's fungus. So I'll address that with you. God bless you guys. I'll see you Thursday for 90 minutes. Tell a friend. Bye-bye.